Hi everybody, this is Lindsay from WindingRoadCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make the Southwest Kimono. This is a very beginner friendly pattern and I will walk you through it step by step. You can also get the written pattern for this in the description box below as well as purchase a PDF version of the pattern on Etsy. So before we get started, I'm just going to show you the main design of this pattern. It is really going to be, for the most part, a two row repeat, but every two rows you're going to be working four more of the pink in double crochet, and then slowly you're going to start coming backwards and then deleting four of the pink to make this pattern. But I will show you each row until we get to our repeat. You'll repeat this pattern three times, this design within the pattern, and then you will make two of these rectangle panels and I'll show you how to sew them together. For this pattern I'm using two different colors in the Lion Brand ZZ Twist and you can get all the material information in the pattern. For each row I'm going to be using three strands of yarn at a time and instead of carrying one strand of gray that is just my choice but I did it so I'd have a nice clean look on the pink and not have that gray peeking through. You're also going to need a size J crochet hook. And right now we'll go ahead and get started. You're going to start by making a chain. I'm going to chain 57. I am making the middle of the three sizes for this pattern. There is a extra small, small size, a medium and large size, and an extra large and 2x size. This is meant to be worn loose, so that's why the sizes kind of blend together a little bit. So once you've completed your chain, all you're going to do is work a double crochet into the third chain from the hook and in every chain all the way across. For this size, it's going to leave us with a total of 55 double crochet stitches. If you are enjoying this video tutorial, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I will be sharing more video tutorials every week. I'm just finishing up my last double crochet here and then we can begin row two. Row two is another easy row. We are just going to chain two, turn our work, and then double crochet in every stitch across. Or if you know how to do it, you can also do a standing double crochet. You can do this by pulling up your hook, wrapping it around that yarn that you just pulled up, pull up a loop, insert it into your next stitch, pull up a loop, and then complete your double crochet. This is called a standing double crochet, and I've been using this to get a much cleaner edge on the side of my work. But you definitely can just chain two and work a double crochet into the first stitch. That works just as well. But I will be using the standing double crochet for the entirety of this project. And so again, for row two, you're just going to double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So I'm just finishing up row two here. And as we do row three and four, these are going to be our two row repeat. So the rows are going to stay exactly the same with how you do your stitches. The only thing that's going to change is the number of stitches that we do in pink and the number that we do in gray to create the pattern. So as I start row three, Again, you can chain up two and work a double crochet into the first stitch if you're a beginner. Or if you'd like to, you can also uh, use a standing double crochet. So here you see I've done just a regular chain two and a double crochet in the first stitch. And then once again, I'm going to show you how I do a standing double crochet. So you pull up your loop, wrap it around that loop grab the yarn so you have two loops over the hook, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and complete your double crochet like normal. So that's another option. So for row three, you're going to double crochet into the first stitch. We are going to chain one and skip the next stitch. This is just going to give us some kind of nice open laciness in the center of kimono. So skip the next stitch and double crochet into the third stitch, chain one one more time, skip the next stitch and double crochet into the fifth stitch, 
and then this is actually the stitch that we are going to chain colors. So we have this nice open stitchness and since we are changing colors I'm actually going to redo this stitch all together. To change colors you'll yarn over, insert your hook into to make your next stitch, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then to change your colors you're just going to grab your next strand of yarn and use this to complete your double crochet. So yarn over with a new color and then pull that color through the last two loops and that will give you a nice clean color change. As I said I am going to be using three strands of yarn here um, just so that I'm not carrying this gray underneath the pink but if you are a beginner I highly recommend carrying that gray yarn laying it on top of your work and crocheting with the pink over it. So this is our first row with the pink so we are only going to crochet four stitches in pink. Stitch three and here is stitch number four. And again because we're changing colors we are going to complete this double crochet using the next gray yarn. So we'll just grab our next strand of gray and pull that through the last two loops. Now for this size we are going to work 33 double crochet using the gray yarn. So just work all the way across to we're almost to the end and then we're going to work some more open stitches. If this is your first time crocheting a garment, I would love to know in the comments below and if not, let me know what other kind of patterns you've crocheted before. So I'm working my 33rd double crochet in gray and I went ahead and marked with this wooden pin where I'm going to start changing my stitches. So I'm going to chain one here, skip a stitch, work a double crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to do this six times. We're going to chain one again, skip the next stitch, work a double crochet in the following stitch, chain one again, skip the next stitch, work a double crochet in the following stitch, chain again, and you're basically doing this until you have one stitch left. So once we repeated this six times, all we're going to do is work a double crochet into the very last stitch and that will end this row. So now when we go to work row four, we are basically going to do the exact same thing we did in row three, just in reverse. So everywhere you chain and skip a stitch, you're going to do that again. And every stitch that was gray is going to remain gray. When we work over the pink stitches here, we are going to do more pink stitches. We're not going to do any increases at this point. So you're just going to go back and forth, make sure these two rows match exactly. So we're going to either start with a chain two or a standing double crochet, whichever you'd like, and then double crochet in that first stitch. Then you're going to double crochet into the next stitch. And the following stitch is a chain one. So we will chain one, skip the chain space, and work a double crochet into the next stitch. And then repeat that five more times. So chain one, skip the chain space, and double crochet into the next stitch. And just keep that up until you have no more chain spaces to skip. Chain one, skip the next chain space, double crochet. So then we're doing our last chain one, and then double crochet into the next stitch and all the stitches until we reach our pink area. So 
So then when you get to the point where your stitches underneath are changing to pink, we are going to make pink double crochets into the pink stitches from the previous row. So I'm just changing my colors. Again, I'm using three strands of yarn, so I'm not carrying my yarn underneath these stitches. And then I just make my four double crochet in pink. One, two, three, and four. And then change right back to gray. Yarn over, complete the last double crochet with the gray to change colors. And then in your last few stitches, again, we're making open stitches, so start with a double crochet in gray. From here, we will chain one, skip the chain space, and work a double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one once more, oops, chain one again, and then double crochet into the very last stitch, and that completes this row. So all of your rows coming up are gonna be exact repeats of this row. The only thing that's gonna change is that we are gonna move out and do four additional pinks in the next row. So I will show you each row what it's gonna look like, but we aren't going to be crocheting through it. So here you can see I've worked rows five and six, and again, they are exactly the same as the previous two rows. We just did an additional four double crochet in the pink. So there's a total of eight double crochet in the pink on both of these rows, and then the rest are in the gray. So now you can see rows seven and eight. Again, we had did an additional four double crochet in the pink, so there are a total of 12 double crochet in pink in these two rows. Everything is still remaining the same. Here is a shot of rows nine and 10. In rows nine and 10, you're working 16 in pink and 21 in the gray double crochet. For rows 11 and 12, you're working 20 stitches in pink and 17 stitches in the gray. For rows 13 and 14, you're working 24 stitches in pink and 13 in the gray. And here you can see rows 15 and 16 where we've worked 28 stitches in pink and nine in the gray. But if you were working a size small, this will actually be your very last de uh, increase in the pink and you would go ahead and start decreasing the pink every two rows. Um, but for the medium, we will do one more increase. And that row is rows 17 and 18 where we're working 32 stitches in the pink and only four stitches in the gray. Um, you can get more details in the pattern on how to make adjustments for the different sizes, but from this point on, we are actually going to be decreasing the number of pink we do every two rows. And you'll just keep doing that, do the same thing we've been doing with the increasing, except for decreasing every two rows until you have honestly no pinks left. And I will show you real quick how I change colors when you are four stitches decreasing. So when you do reach the point where you are going to change over to gray, you are going to change the colors exactly the same way, but we are gonna work over this yarn a little bit. So just pull your grain over to the pink yarn where you're changing colors, pull that through. And then when you go to make your next stitch, make sure you make that stitch around that gray yarn that you've pulled over. So it's gonna be worked underneath the gray stitches, the next four gray stitches and that way it hides that yarn, but yet you don't have to clip the yarn and have an additional yarn tail to weave in. And then just continue working your grays across the rest of the row. So from where we are now, I'm actually on row 19, but if you're following the pattern, this is row 23, because we skipped four rows that are only used in the extra large size of this pattern. But at this point, what we're gonna do, just to separate our patterns a little bit, is we're gonna do two rows, exactly the same repeat of what we've been doing, but these rows are gonna be completely solid gray. So I went ahead and clipped my pink yarn and my other gray yarn, and I'm just using one set of gray yarn to go all the way across and back. 
for these rows and then it's going to be as simple as repeating several of these rows over and over again. So now that we've done our two rows in between, all you're going to do is repeat rows 3 through 38 if you're doing the medium size. If you're following along with the pattern, again, you're going to be skipping rows 19 through 22 for the medium size. But you're just simply going to repeat these rows and then you're going to repeat 3 through 36, leaving out those last two gray rows because the very last two gray rows of the pattern is going to be slightly different. They're going to be completely solid rows. So I will go ahead and get uh, rest, all these repeats done and show you how to finish up the last two rows. All right, so here I have my finished project except for those very last two rows. And you can see here we have repeated this pattern three times with that gray strip in between each of them. So it makes a very long rectangle. And when you are done with this, you're gonna have to make a second rectangle for us to sew together. But let's go ahead and finish up our last two rows. So for our last two rows, we will be doing two solid rows of double crochet. This just allows us to match the other side of our kimono because this is going to be hanging over our shoulder. So we want those two sides to match up. I'm going to make a standing double crochet, but again, by now you know you can chain two and work a double crochet into the first stitch as an alternative method. And then all the way across this, this row, we are going to be double crocheting into every chain space and into every stitch all the way across the row. You should, just like every row in this pattern, you should still have 55 double crochet at the end of this row. Once you work into the other side, just remember to make a double crochet into the chain spaces as well as into the stitches. So we finished up our second to last row. And now we'll just switch and do our very last row. So turn your work, chain two, or make a standing double crochet. Work your first double crochet into the first stitch, and then just simply work a double crochet into every stitch all the way along this row. So really nice, easy last row, but it gives us a nice, clean, solid bottom for this kimono. So once you complete your last row, all it's needed to do is to fasten off this row and weave in all your ends. To do this, you just go ahead and clip your thread, wrap your thread around your hook and pull that thread through the very last loop that will fasten it off. And then we're just going to make a second panel exactly like this and sew them together. So to sew our pieces together, we are going to fold our panel in half so that our designs line up with each other. And then you just want to make sure that that top shoulder is has that center design folded exactly in half. Line up all of your rows. So once you get everything nice and lined up, you're going to sew up to the point where you're in between the first and the second design on this kimono. And this is going to be approximately 13 inches from the bottom of your kimono up to this point. And that's for the medium size. The other sizes are listed in the pattern. So just use a yarn needle and whip stitch the two sides together. And then once you've completed this panel, you'll just repeat the exact same thing for your second panel. And then our very last seam we need to make is going to be the back seam. So if you lay your panels lined up next to each other, you're just going to open up the front of it because that's going to stay open and then we're going to sew up this back seam. So make sure that all your stitches are nice and lined up and then we are going to sew up to right about here. You want it to be a little bit lower in the back so that it's not right up on your neck but we're just going to whip stitch up to this point here which is approximately 19 inches to 20 inches or so for the medium size. And then once the seam is sewed up, all you'll have to do is hide, uh, weave in all your ends and your kimono is ready to be worn. So I really hope you liked this video tutorial. 
I hope you really enjoy your Southwest style kimono. It's a really fun pattern. Make sure you check out my website for lots of other fun beginner friendly patterns to intermediate patterns. I have several other videos that you can also check out on my YouTube channel. So while you're here, don't forget to subscribe.